Hey guys, welcome back to That LA Garage. Today we're going to learn how to change the brakes on a Macan base. Uh, we're going to learn how to, uh, we're going we're gonna to install the brakes without taking off the wheel. Okay, so the first step, the first step you want to do is uh, take off the wheel. All right, so the, so the second step I like to do is remove the bolt on the on the rotor. Uh, while everything's together, it's easier to do it now. And using an impact is a lot easier because it gets filled with uh, dust and everything. So I like to use the impact. All right, so first thing I like to do is um, loosen the sensor, the brake wear sensor. So you gotta twist it out like so. Remove this over here like that. Now you have more slack, and then disconnect like that. Sensors, sensors out. Then while I'm in this area, I'm just gonna break loose these these bolts. I'm not going to fully take them out, I'm just breaking them loose. So I could use my power tools afterwards. Next, I'm going to work on separating the pistons. And I like to wedge it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay, right there. That's a good spot right there. As long as I can get in there and just pull it all the way. Now that that is all the way in, all the way. I want to move on to the next side. Once you got some movement on it, you could start moving to the middle of it. So that's there, and now we're going to move this one again. We want both of them completely. We want to push the pistons in all the way. This way you don't have to buy any fancy tools. They do it with two small pry bars, or you could do them with uh, screwdrivers as well. Now you need a metal pick to just start off. Knock it out. That's one. Once the pressure is off, you can pull them off easier. Straight out. Pull your pads out. Because the pads ride on this, you want to clean them really well. It rides on here, and it rides against these. So, you get as much dirt off, use the Brillo pad afterwards. We're going to make them look new. You could use brake cleaner, you could use a bunch of different cleaners, that's not important. As long as you get all the, the brake dust built up on it. You focus on the parts that it's riding on. All right, so turn off the machine, and the next step, you just let it here, let it dry off till we're ready for it. Now we can remove the caliper. Pull it out, and just set it aside right there. We're gonna get that to that in a second. We're gonna take the rotor, we're gonna get rid of it, 
Okay, so something that a lot of people don't do, uh, especially people who are doing this in their garage and things of that sort, this is something that a lot of dealerships do and uh, a lot of re uh, reputable shops do, which is very important. You have to sand down uh, the rust around the hub, so when the new rotor sits on it, there's no rust in between. When there's rust in between, it, it uh, promotes a warping of the rotor. So it does, because it pushes from the inside and it gives it some, some pressures in different areas, not flat. So usually use, we use a 90-degree uh, uh, angle grinder with a cookie. It's very not, a, uh, it's not a, um, abrasive at all. It does not cut through metal, but it just rubs down all the all the rust off but wear your glasses first first thing is first all right look at that like brand new all right so the next step New, new rotor goes on, and that little screw, put it in, it'll help you while everything is going to be held in place. Make sure you clean your hands before, you don't want any oil on it. Again, that will help uh, prevent ro uh, rotor from warping. No hot spots on any, any side. That's that. In our caliper. We're going to clean our caliper here on the top and the bottom. We're going to clean it over here because that's where the, the brake pads um, slide on. So we need those to be really clean. <coughs> so I use simple brake cleaner and a, and a brush. All right, first, you got to use new bolts and put a little anti-seize on it. Start the thread by the hand. And force it in. Snug it down, not too tight. <clears throat> You can go find out what the torque spec is, but I've been doing this for a very long time. I feel, I have a good feel for it already. And if anybody tells you that they only use a torque wrench, chances are they're lying. I mean, unless they're doing it in their house. Nobody has time for that when you're working. All right, so now it's time for our brake pads. All right, so now we're gonna get our, put our brake pads in there. Um, the The, Bigger piece of glue goes on the top, so you take it off, take off the sticker. Next thing, the backing of the sticker, next thing is this is the metal and this is the brake, brake pad. You don't touch the brake pad, you just rub some anti-seize on. If you get a little bit on it, it's not the end of the world, but try not to. This is where the pad slides in and out on those two points. So make sure to lube both of them up and slide it in. This is the other side.
All right, now you take these two pins that you got ready. You put some, you put some uh, anti-seize on them because we're using it as a grease. Just rub it on it. What happens with these aluminum calipers is you, we're using steel bolts in it and sometimes the steel um, heats up and then when you take the bolts out of them, it, uh, because the aluminum and the steel expand and contract at different temperatures, so that's how sometimes you will strip, bolt, strip the caliper itself. So to prevent that, you're putting a light film of anti-seize on it. You start this one in. I like to start with the bottom one. And then we're going to put the backing plate of it. But one other thing is... Again, the caliper, the, the brake pads ride on this, so I like to just put a little bit of anti-seize on it, so it go open, goes really nice back and forth. Slide it on into, into both holes. Same thing with the top. And get a little hammer and tap them in. Nothing crazy. That's it. Now it's time to put in the brake wear sensor. Uh, you plug it into the caliper. Uh, the inner one has a little groove and you run it through, there's a little uh, cut out into the caliper, run it around, there's this uh, rubber band that uh, attaches to the bleeder screw, uh, and then you plug it back in, um, you, you plug the electric connector in, and you turn the whole knob in until it clicks it into place. Now it's time to put the wheel back on and pretend like we never even took it off. Star pattern. Star pattern means you put the bolt always the next bolt all the, uh, always on the opposite end of the last one you just started. So from here we can even move from here. From here we even moved to one of these. But since this one is tightened, you move on to that one. That one's tightened and you move back onto this one. And from here you move on to there. From there you move on to here. And then you're done. Thanks for watching our dad's video. So don't forget to hit the notification and please subscribe for more daily awesome future videos. And if you have a question, you could comment down below. And don't forget to hit that bell so you can get notified to, uh, to the next video that comes out. And please and, like the and video. And don't forget, if you guys hit us, you ain't popping. Poppin'.